Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And we're back with one of my favorite weapon combinations, Sword and Cape versus Sword and Shield. As always, this is light and playful sparring to really explore the differences between these weapon combinations. And just to be clear, every thrust on the cape counts as a hit and blows that make contact with the upper part of the blade or deliver enough force. So you're already seeing why the cape is one of my favorite weapons. It's just such an active defensive implement that can also be used offensively. It's great for grappling, it's great for using it as a shield or even using it as a thrown implement to surprise your opponents. So my usual tactic at the beginning of these bouts is either to not use the cape at all to make my opponent forget that I have it or, like here, using it very actively, using all the range I can get with it to open my opponents up and use that advantage with my sword. In this bout I wrap the cape around my arm using it like a shield, just protecting it at the wider ranges from Stefan's blows, but he does a nice counter as I engage in, pushing with his shield arm into my head and body. As always, if you have a defensive implement or a good fighting in general, try to use provocations high to open them up low or provocations low to open them up high. This bout really emphasizes why the cape is so awesome. Not only do you get a defensive implement which almost protects like a shield, but you also can engage with your offhand into wrestling actions fairly easily, like here grabbing Stefan's blade where you actually have to be careful to not just break a finger. A danger, but really an advantage of playful and light sparring is that you more often than not will try things that you otherwise wouldn't. Here I get punished though for my hesitant attacks and my hesitant provocations by Stefan who just thrusts in over my blade. This one looks a bit messy, but I actually get hold of Stefan's blade who just thrusts right beside me while I'll draw my cut over his face. And the next one I'm a bit too overconfident though and get pulled right to into a trap where I get my blade stuck on Stefan's rotella while he draws his blade out and thrusts me with an imbrocata, so a thrust from above. Here you see quite well why stepping on a staircase isn't a good idea, because you now limited your movement quite a bit and made it really obvious where you will go next. For the next play I would like to throw the cape, which is really a play that is quite contested even by historical fencing masters, and while I get my own blow in, I get immediately stabbed in the hand, so really not a great outcome for myself. So to not conclude on just shenanigans, I try to get a serious one in there here and we're engaging quite a bit on the upper lines until I get a small displacement with my cape to get Stefan down below. And then for the last one I feel the blow to my hand, but it's actually just a flat, so not really a danger, but we reset anyway and switch weapons to reset and get another perspective. So now with the Rotella I feel quite a bit more confident because it's a weapon combination I've been practicing for almost 14 years now. And you see that in a reverso that I throw that immediately turns into an imbrocata which thrusts Stefan into the chest. Against the cape I want my opponents to worry about their cape arm to actually withdraw it and giving me that small tempo, that small timing to get my blows in right around it. I feel even in playful sparring it's always useful to start with a plan. Here once again starting down low to then go high where I place a little draw cut on Stefan's hand which actually wouldn't count too much in our play but I marked it anyway because we actually stopped so there you go. And in the next one I provoke high two times to then go low to abuse that opening and strike Stefan to the knee. 
While the Rotella is obviously not that great at wrestling actions, it can still displace the sword arm of the opponent and you should make good use of it by displacing them, especially to your own right, if you are a right-hander. After all these purposeful motions, we again get a bit more playful, waving around with the cape and our sword. Nothing really happens. I stopped because I felt a resistance, but it was just uh, Stefan's crossguard behind uh, his own cape. So we reset and get back into the fight where oftentimes it really seems that it was really really close and a hit almost happened, but obviously we kept going until I get a hit on Stefan's leg, which is indeed through the cape. So that blow would be quite weak as the cape takes a lot of energy out of it. In this one Stefan and I exchange goods, while I get the cape, Stefan gets the thrust so everyone's happy. Or me at least. Grabbing the cape just with the hand without uh, throwing it around your arm is actually another thing that is quite contested even by historical masters, but you see its advantages here where my blow gets once again dampened by Stefan's cape. Against the cape you really have to take care not to get entangled, so to speak, by the cape, to get your sword displaced and really to have it free floating, to use it as you'd like here with another imbrocata. And there the full reverso into the imbrocata is a really useful tool. So, sword and rotella versus sword and cape. I think it was quite a balanced fight actually, but the weapons felt a lot different. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with this one. So, um, okay, I, I'm uh, way less uh, trained in cape and sword. So uh, for me, there was a difference between both. But if I normalize this with how much I use both, I would say I they handled basically comparable the same in the sense of what they could, uh, you know, how difficult to use they were. I mean, in different kind of motions, different kind of variety of things I could do with both. So, but this compensated well, I guess. Yeah. So I think the cape is much more offensive. You can have a lot of reach, especially if you throw the cape. You don't have to let it go even, but you have still a lot of reach to bind or displace the opponent's weapon or just to distract them. But on the other hand, in the defense, you are way more vulnerable. So you really want to uh, block cuts by stepping in to get them in the strong or if they catch you with their weak so they um, developed already the full blow then you want to use your sword to lessen the impact and then you can go into a wrestling action with the cape quite easily and for thrust it's way less uh, protective of course. Yeah, I think I got, got you on, one, on the hand once. Yeah definitely. <laughs> so you thrust me nicely through the cape and I felt that uh, pretty good. So yeah, nah, it's fine. So yeah, so it's, there's much more offensive potential but the defense uh, side of things is um, way less pronounced of course. Anything else? Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends how you def uh, how you define defensive and offensive. So if you use this as an active defense, then it's uh, of course you can catch the incoming blow quite nicely by just throwing the cape in in the way and stuff, and then stuff gets uh, entangled and this gives you like this few split seconds more, which you need to then get go around the shield or just make uh, get yourself into an advantage position. Yeah, so one thing with the cape and the rotella as well is it's uh, also a passive defense. So just if you like there comes a mandrito and you go into a hanging parry and you have your cape underneath, then there's a lot of space now occupied by your weapons where the opponent can't easily just go underneath and strike you to your body or even to your legs. So this is really, really nice to have something there where the opponent can entangle your sword. 
On the other hand, you can also yourself entangle your sword, but that's maybe more of a thing because we're not that practiced with sword and cape yet. So we have to uh, invest way more time into sparring with the, uh, this weapon combination. So much fine weapon combination, so little time. Yeah, so <laughs> I think actually sword and cape on the difficulty level side of things, I would almost put it on par with two swords because if you want to make good use of it and not just as a weaker rotella where it's just wrapped around your arm, then you have to be well versed in using your left, high, uh, using your left hand offensively and also defensively and then to, in the same tempo, uh, in the ideal world, thrust them or strike around their defenses. Maybe it compares to the dagger when you're not versed in the dagger. So you have a weapon which can defend, but you have to use it more offensively in order to make it work. Mm -hmm. But the dagger has uh, a bit less reach, so you can get active with the cape way earlier than yeah. with the dagger, of course. Okay. So, this is all the summary. We hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, you can uh, support us with a like, you can subscribe to the channel to get weekly videos for free. You can support us even further on Patreon. We appreciate your support there very, very much. And take care, until next time.